Hi, I'm Angie and you're watching Dante's 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 Vaccinating. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Well, Canelo fans, I got some more bad news for you. Now it's gotten to the point where everyone is pressuring Canelo Alvarez to step up in competition. No one is happy with the level of opposition that Canelo Alvarez continues to fight, and that includes his own promotional team, Oscar De La Hoya, and people like Bernard Hopkins. And now you have DeZone, who's very upset with Canelo Alvarez's level of opposition. So my question is, why is it no one is agreeing with these diehard Canelo Alvarez fans that come up with the most ridiculous excuses to defend Canelo, excuses that Canelo himself is not even using? I mean, as always, I've been telling you guys the truth since day one. And now you're starting to hear everyone corroborate almost every single thing that you've heard me say. First, it started with the Mexican legends like Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., Juan Manuel Marquez, Eric Morales, Marco Antonio Barrera, and there's more. And then even fighters is fighting today from Marcos Maidana, who is recently retired, to other Mexican fighters that want to challenge or have challenged Canelo like Gilberto Ramirez. Then you had Canelo Alvarez's own promoter who has been trying to push Canelo to get in the ring with the likes of Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andre and Bernard Hopkins who was trying to push Canelo to get in the ring with Jamal Charlo. Now you have the zone that's upset with Canelo Alvarez claiming that he's not holding up his end of the bargain with his level of opposition. It's just been reported by Mike Coppinger the major problem that the zone is having with Canelo right now is they feel Canelo, quote, hasn't lived up to its contractual obligation to deliver one premier Canelo Alvarez event per year. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, when it comes to Gennady Golovkin, obviously that's one of the fights that the zone wants. They've been wanting Canelo to take. They've also wanted Canelo to take the Demetrius Andre fight. But when it comes to Gennady Golovkin, Golovkin, he was under the impression that that would basically be his signing bonus was getting a third fight with Gennady, with Canelo Alvarez. Obviously, that didn't happen. So far, since uh, Canelo Alvarez has signed this huge contract with the zone, he's faced Rocky Fielding, he's faced Danny Jacobs, and Sergey Kovalev. Now, let's first start with the Kovalev fight. Did you guys know? The Canelo versus Sergey Kovalev fight only did 600,000 views in the U.S. That is half the number that Charlo fights do on PBC, right? But not just the Charlo brothers. That's the majority of cards on PBC. At Islandi Lara's last fight, he just brought in over a million views in his main event against the opponent he just faced. And Canelo Alvarez brought in 600,000 views for a fight against Sergey Kovalev. It's funny because I was talking to Aki the other day and he was telling me how he has a Mexican friend who's a die, diehard Canelo Alvarez fan. You know, one of those type of fans that defends every single thing that Canelo Alvarez does, right? Aki asked him, what did he think about the Kovalev fight? And this fan said, oh, I didn't watch that fight. He was asked why. And the guy said, because it wasn't really a big fight. This is a die heart Canelo Alvarez fan saying he didn't even watch a Canelo fight because it wasn't, as DeZon will put it, a premier event. We all know the reason why Canelo took that fight is because Sergey Kovalev had already been knocked out twice. He was already towards the end of his career. Matter of fact, this is something that I believe it was Eric Morales. If it was not Eric Morales, it's one of the Mexican former champions. They pointed this out. 
They said he keeps fighting guys that's towards the end of their career, right? And Sergey is one of those fighters. He was the weakest link in the light heavyweight division, had been knocked out twice already. And on top of all of that, Canelo Alvarez, he understood that Kovalev, like a lot of Eastern European fighters, have no inside game, which is just tailor-made for a shorter body puncher like Canelo Alvarez. Now, some fans will try to say, oh, well, the reason why he only did 600,000 views is because it's on the zone and they charge 99 a month. But even that excuse contradicts what these fans said before. Because when DAZN announced that they were gonna raise their price from $9.99 a month to $20 or $19.99 a month, it was the Canelo fans and other decafs that was defending that by saying, hey, that's not a bad price, I'd pay for it. That's a good price, actually. Okay, so why didn't more Canelo Alvarez fans tune in to watch this Canelo fight? By the way, we also have to remember DAZN, they still have the plan where you could pay $99 for the entire year, which is a good deal. In fact, that's actually cheaper than paying for Showtime every month. So there is no excuse for Canelo Alvarez doing such poor numbers against Sergey Kovalev. The fact is, Canelo Alvarez is the only person that really wanted that fight. Nobody was clamoring for a Canelo versus Sergey Kovalev fight. I never heard any Canelo Alvarez fan bring up Kovalev as an opponent before Canelo start talking about it because no one wanted to see it. That's what that proves. Something else that Aki told me in that same conversation with his Mexican friend is when the Canelo fan admitted that he didn't watch the Kovalev fight, Aki asked him, he said, well, would you watch if Canelo fought Jamal Charlo? And he was like, of course I will watch that fight. You see how the truth comes out? Just like everyone would watch if Canelo Alvarez fought Demetrius Andre. I keep telling you guys, the sport is based on race, nationality, and pride. That's the reason why race sells. I told you guys, when Canelo fought against James Kirkland, a complete faded fighter who had already been knocked out, he had no chin anymore, he was towards the end of his career, but because Canelo Alvarez fans knew that he was black and it was a guaranteed win for Canelo Alvarez, oh man, they all tuned in to watch that fight. Do you know how many views that fight did? That fight did two million views. So this is what makes you Canelo fans look so stupid or sound so stupid. When you try to sit over here and say, oh, he doesn't need to fight Charlo because he's a bum, this and that, this and that. He fought Kirkland, who when he was undefeated, he was pretty much on like a Jamal Charlo type level. Canelo would have never fought an undefeated James Kirkland, but he fought the faded way past his prime uh, Kirkland and Canelo Alvarez fans, they had no problem with it. They all ran to their TV screens to watch that fight. So if these fans will tune in to watch Canelo fight James Kirkland towards the end of his career, James Kirkland, we already know that Canelo versus a prime black fighter, undefeated, like once again, Andre or even Charlo, or not even just a black fighter, an undefeated champion like David Benavidez. These fights are gonna do huge numbers. We already know this. These are the type of fights that DAZN are pushing Canelo Alvarez to give the fans. And you can't blame this on Oscar De La Hoya because Oscar has already came out and said he wants Canelo Alvarez to fight the best competition. He was the one that came out and said, in order for Canelo to be great, he has to fight Jamal Charlo. He has to fight Demetrius Andre. If Oscar De La Hoya was trying to protect Canelo from those fighters, he would have said the same things you Canelo Alvarez fans on the internet are saying. He's not gonna put that pressure on Canelo if you don't fight this guy, you're not gonna be considered great. No, he would have said the complete opposite. He would have said, oh man, Canelo doesn't need those guys. They're not on his level. But that's not what he said. Remember this, when Canelo Alvarez was avoiding Edislani Lara, because he avoided Edislani Lara for two years, 
just like he avoided Gennady Golovkin for two years. He finally decided to fight Lara when Mexican fans from Mexico started to flood his social media accounts by saying, why won't you fight this guy Lara? This was after Lara jumped on the stage for everyone to see. That put an enormous amount of pressure on Canelo to take that fight. So Canelo, he finally took the fight. Guess what? Oscar De La Hoya didn't want him to take the fight and Canelo still took the fight. Oscar admitted, I did not want him to take that fight. It was too dangerous. He still took the fight, right? So this proves that Oscar De La Hoya doesn't pull the strings. I mean, you can just look at the type of person Canelo Alvarez is. He's a diva. And when I say he's a diva, I mean things has to be his way. You can see that when you look at him. He demands to have things his way. You ever notice how different Oscar De La Hoya talks about Ryan Garcia versus the way he talks about Canelo Alvarez? Because he knows if he says something like that about Canelo Alvarez, Canelo is going to pitch a bitch, right? Did you guys know that Oscar De La Hoya and Canelo, they're not even on talking terms right now? The only way they communicate is through their lawyers. Do you guys remember when Canelo Alvarez, he came out of nowhere and just started dissing Oscar De La Hoya? saying that he's not loyal and when he was a pro boxer he kept switching trainers he was never a loyal person is what canelo was saying now keep in mind oscar de la hoya had never said anything negative about canelo to the public for canelo to come out and say something like this about de la hoya what that means is either they had a personal conversation where oscar was telling canelo you need to fight these guys, you need to fight these guys. And Canelo didn't want to hear it. Or Canelo found out that Oscar De La Hoya were telling other people in Golden Boy that Canelo needs to fight this guy, he needs to fight this guy, that guy, and he's being very difficult to work with. That's the only way it would make sense for Canelo Alvarez to just lash out the way he did against Oscar De La Hoya. Now you hear Oscar De La Hoya saying, he's going to make a comeback and he's going to do something that Canelo Alvarez is not even willing to do, which will make Canelo Alvarez look bad, regardless if Oscar De La Hoya wins or loses. If Oscar De La Hoya comes back and he gets in the ring with any of the fighters that Canelo Alvarez is avoiding, that's going to make Canelo look like a big joke. To see this 47 year old man do something that a 30-year-old Canelo Alvarez wasn't even willing to do. It's gonna be a bad look, guys, completely. I mean, it's already a bad look for Canelo right now. That just makes it even worse. So we talked about one of the three of Canelo Alvarez's opponents that he faced since he's been with the zone. Then it was Rocky Fielding. We don't have to talk too long about that. We already know that was a huge cherry pick. Going into that fight, Rocky Fielding had recently came off of a first round knockout loss to Caleb Smith. But yet, listen to these Canelo Alvarez fans. They'll tell you that the black guys don't deserve to fight Canelo Alvarez. Oh yeah, but Rocky Fielding, they had no problem with him. They never called him a bum. They never called him anything. Because they want Canelo to fight bums. They want him to fight guys that are guaranteed wins. They don't want him to get in the ring with someone who even has a 40% chance, even a 30% chance of winning which says a lot about the confidence of a Canelo Alvarez fan. But see, for me, I'm gonna root for my country. So yeah, if Demetrius Andrade or Charlo gets in the ring with Canelo Alvarez, I can tell you right now, it's a very good chance that Canelo can beat both of those guys because those are 50-50 fights. Now, I truly believe that Andrade, he wins, he beats Canelo hands down. I believe Charlo versus Canelo is more of a 50-50 fight. Canelo has a better chance of beating Charlo than he does of beating Andre. But at the same time, I still wanna see the fight. Even if I know my country is gonna lose, I still wanna see the fight because that is how a real boxing fan is supposed to think. I mean, if you think your football team has a good chance of losing in the Super Bowl, you still wanna watch the Super Bowl, right? So it should be the same way when it comes to boxing. But the difference is, Boxing is far more personal because it's more tribal. Because 
it's more race driven. When it comes to football, the majority of football players are black and the rest are white, but they're on the same team. So it's not like you have an all white team going up against an all Mexican team, an all Filipino team going against an all black team. So this is the reason why it's not as personal when it comes to basketball, football, and other sports. Now, I'll close out with talking about Danny Jacobs. Now, when it comes to Danny Jacobs, he was a good opponent. But you have to understand something. When it comes to Canelo, the bar is so low. The standards are set so low that almost anyone he fights that's a decent opponent, it looks like a huge step up in competition. If you're comparing him to the Rocky Fieldings, to the Sergey Kovalevs, to the Liam Smiths, and et cetera, et cetera. So it looks like it's a much better opponent, and it is a good opponent. But if you're comparing Danny Jacobs to Demetrius Andre, Jamal Charlo, who all fight in the same division, you ask the question, what's the difference from Jacobs, Andre, and Charlo? The only difference is the fact that Andre and Charlo are still undefeated. They're still undefeated. They've never lost. They've never been knocked out before. Danny Jacobs, he's been knocked out before. He has two losses on his record. So do you think it's a coincidence the only fighter that Canelo fought out of that trio was the one who's been knocked out before and already had two losses on his record? And the answer is no, it's not a coincidence. Canelo Alvarez, he knows exactly what he's doing. But he keeps sticking his foot in his mouth because Canelo was the one that told everybody just like Golovkin did. They both said, I want to unify all of the belts. That's what Canelo said. But all of a sudden, once there's tough competition in that division that's holding the other belts, now he decides he doesn't want to unify the belts. Canelo Alvarez is a very, very talented fighter, and he is destroying his legacy right now. And he's running out of time. The reason why he's running out of time because he usually only fights tough competition once every two years. And if you do the math, maybe we'll get lucky and see him in with a very, very tough elite champion. I'm talking about undefeated guys. I'm not talking about just a good opponent. I'm not just talking about an opponent that we're comparing to Rocky Fielding, which that will make any opponent look like a good opponent if you're comparing them to Rocky Fielding or even Sergey Kovalev. I'm talking about undefeated young in their prime champions like David Benavidez, like Arthur Betterbeev, like Andre, Charlo. I mean, think about it. It was like years ago that Canelo Alvarez fought Gennady Golovkin, right? So if once again, if you do the math, by the time Canelo Alvarez gets 36 years old, he'll probably only fight maybe two or three fighters on that level of fighters that I just mentioned, undefeated. And we may get lucky to even see him fight two or three of those type of fighters on that level. He's gotta step his game up. Like I said, Canelo is a very talented fighter. Um, he has the ability to beat all of these guys, honestly. I'm not saying I pick him against all of them, but he has the skill, he's good enough, he just doesn't have the confidence. He doesn't believe in himself. And that's gonna really cost him if he doesn't step his game up. The walls are closing in. Everyone has turned on Canelo Alvarez and only he can fix this problem. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. You know, I always say on this channel, pay-per-view fights should actually be free. And now the day has come where I'm about to hook you up with an app where you can watch all your pay-per-view events, boxing, UFC, etc., for free. I wanna introduce Block TV the best internet streaming television app out there. They provide over 3,600 channels, including HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, and Stars. They have a massive video on demand library with over 40,000 of the new release movies and the latest TV series. And it also includes DVR. So you're getting all of this for $34.99 a month. And once again, that includes free pay-per-view. So this one right here is a no-brainer, guys, because back in Las Vegas, I was paying damn near 200 bucks a month for my cable. Those days are long gone now. So to get the app, make sure you guys go over to GetBlockTV.com and put in my promo code and get 30% off your first month. You also get a free month for every friend you refer. The promo code is DBNation.